Beginning of session 17. This time I had to break it down into three parts. So we're going to start today with the changes on Earth that are going to happen as we go and transition to four density and also the Tunguska crater. Let's begin. A good part of this video is going to be about material that was excluded in the original books and was then included in book five, where they put personal information that they had in the channeling and also um, material that wasn't kind of necessary for the law of one in their original form as they intended it. So uh, I, like I said in the last video, sometimes I take some of this content out because it's not even relevant to the series that I'm doing. It's also available there if, if you want to read it. Uh, but also in this session, I thought it was interesting because they talk about the crater of, of Tunguska in Russia. And it was it's a pretty good you know story uh, just to have it. And I just decided to include it and talk about it a little bit. But again, there's not much uh, of importance there in any case. Also in this session is where they correct the dates that we have talked about in the past of 2,300 and 2,600 years ago. They corrected 1,000 years uh, in the past. So 3,300 and 3,600 for the dates that the Orion group uh, came here, Yahweh and all that stuff. So just pointing that out as well. And other than that, we're going to get right now into the planetary changes that are supposed to happen according to Ra. And uh, some of the information that I also have, it's going to be a little bit long. It's going to take probably half of the video. We'll see. And it's uh, it's pretty cool because it talks about the transition to four density and what's going to happen. Now, the first question that we have is actually um, a little truncated because uh, Don started talking about how much of an honor it was, you know, to be doing the work and that he had questions. But in any case, you can read the full question if you want on the on their website or in books if you have it links are in the description as usual but um it starts basically with don saying we are now in the four density will the effects of the four density increase in the next 30 years will we see more changes in our environment and our effect upon our, our environment rob begins to explain it's going to be a long one the four density is a vibrational spectrum. Your time-space continuum has spiraled your planetary sphere and your, what we would call galaxy, what you call star, into this vibration. This will cause the planetary sphere itself to electromagnetically realign its vortices of reception of the in-streaming of cosmic forces expressing themselves as vibrational webs so that the Earth will thus be four density magnetized as you might call it. So I'm gonna make pauses in every one of the slideshows that we have so I can keep up with the information that I'm reading as I, uh, I recall information and what I know and what I understand. So what matches here that I know about is that the four density is a vibrational spectrum. We know that that's just the density of the uh, space that we are traveling through. NASA has discovered this as a cloud, an unexpected cloud of energized um, matter that is uh, in, in space. We know this is the entrance into the fourth density of this reality that we're going to start activating or it's active already in the planet. And that's what they're talking about when it says your time space continuum has fired your planetary sphere and your, what it would call galaxy, into this vibration, basically. So yes, the uh, the time-space continuum has spiraled down our star and planet to enter this area of highly energized particles that is um, what we know for density. And it says, this will cause the planetary sphere itself to electromagnetically realign its vortices of reception for the in-streaming uh, of cosmic force expressing itself as vibrational webs so that the earth will be then for magnetized for density magnetized this is basically there is a point in the galaxy as the geometry tells us that this in streamings are basically shooting down energy to the planet in a way that is harmonizing it into the four density that we are uh, supposed to get into 
into this uh, time space continuum. It's very important to keep in mind. It's not just the, the whole um, uh, spectrum of densities. It's just this one in general uh, or specific rather. So what's happening is that this is going to um, magnetize and like they say here, uh, realign its vortices. This is important because right in the books, they talk about that there's going to be a shift in the poles, and we have heard about this in uh, from other content like David Wilcock and Corey Good, and have expressed this uh, type of information that is happening. And basically, there's going to be a 20 degree realignment of the North Pole. Uh, I believe it's northeast, so it's just going to realign a little bit better. That's what's what they're talking about. That's going to happen, and that polar shifting is going to cause you know the changes that we're talking about as it aligns with the energies that are in streaming from uh, from the galaxy itself, where four density is coming from. All right, hope that makes sense. Let's go on. And Ra continues and says, this is going to occur with some inconvenience, as we have said before, due to the energies of the thought forms of your peoples, which disturb the orderly constructs of energy patterns within your Earth's spirals of energy, which increases entropy and unusable heat. This will cause your planetary sphere to have some ruptures in its outer garment while making itself appropriately magnetized for fur density. This is the planetary adjustment. That's the planetary adjustment I was talking about. Uh, now, the inconvenience that is happening is obviously our vibrational frequency, which is not in alignment with the four density in streaming energies that we are receiving. The thought forms that we are energizing, that we are uh, causing, like they say here, will disturb the orderly constructs of energy patterns within your Earth's spirals of energy. Of course, there is just this harmony between the in-streaming energies and the ones that we are producing. This is why uh, not the mainstream awakening that we need, it's actually the awakening of the soul, of us knowing who we are, and not just to the system or the government and all this stuff that is just transient information. We need to find ourselves to realign our frequencies to the ones that are in streaming right now to the planet. That's why wanderers were sent here to aid in the planetary, um, uh, I would say, evolution. But it's not happening. <laughs> it's not, I mean, it's not surprising that we all got caught in the nets of craziness that's happening in the chaotic world. But that's what needs to happen for this to be without much inconvenience. Otherwise, it's just going to happen with inconvenience, as they're saying here. And they say that it's going to increase entropy and unusable heat. I interpret this as being the unusable heat from the friction that we're having of the frequency that we are producing and the in-streaming energies that are not harmonized. So therefore, it's causing this, um, this unusable heat or friction. Uh, they also say this will cause your planetary sphere to have some ruptures in its outer garment. I interpret that as the apocalyptic you know, stuff they talk about. It's not going to be that crazy. Don't worry about it. But it's going to rupture the... Um, uh, I would say that they say the garment, I, I would think, is, you know, the, the surface of the planet, vol volcanic eruptions and earthquakes and stuff like that. That I mean, for us, might be scary. For the planet, it's nothing. It's still going to evolve from here. Uh, but we want this to be as, as uh, harmonious as possible. Doesn't seem like it's going to be that way. We'll just have to see, watch, wait. And uh, one thing that I'll say, because I don't want to add to the panic, uh, that people have is that we're not going to suffer this. This is going to be something, I mean, Ra says it in other sessions, we've discussed it in the past, where uh, Don asks about the planetary changes that are going to happen, and Ra says, we don't concern ourselves with the changes um, that, uh, that bring about the harvest. They don't really care about those changes because we're not, we're not going to have to suffer that. Maybe some of them right now, uh, it's not going to be that that um, that chaotic. But then again, we'll have to see. I don't think we're going to suffer it by the things that I hear and know about it. And it just doesn't make sense. We are here just to aid the planet, not to suffer, you know, for some reason. That's not part of, that's like old, you know, um, biblical suffering type of dogma. So <laughs> it doesn't apply to us. All right, let's go on. Then we have... Ra saying, 
you will find a sharp increase in the number of people, as you call mind-body-spirit complexes, whose vibrational potentials include the potential for forward vibrational distortions. Thus, there will seem to be, shall we say, a new breed. These are those incarnating for forward density work. Well, this sounds like the wanderers and one-time comers, the star seeds and so on, that are coming here to do this work. I believe it has more to do with the newer generations that have been coming to Earth. I'm not sure if I'm included there or if my parents or even the ones before, which they were already incarnating in for density, at least vibration that was in the planet, those generations all the way up to the new ones, even the newborns that are coming. But they do say that there is going to be potential, um, I'm sorry, a new breed um, that will be incarnated for four density work. Four density work seems just uh, the type of work that we will be doing. I mean, we start doing it now here in third density, but also in four density. So uh, it's hard to know what, for me at least, to interpret what they mean exactly, but that's what they're saying. And it's just about the, um, the, the people incarnating in these last decades to do the work that we need for ascension and also for the work that we're going to be doing in four density if we ascend, assuming we do ascend, uh, us people, the planet will. <laughs> Some will have to repeat, and that's fine. All right, Ra says and continues, there will also be an increase in the short run of negatively oriented or polarized mind-body-spirit complexes and social complexes due to the polarizing conditions of the sharp delineation between fourth density characteristics and third density self service orientation. This to me is showing the uh, friction that's going also to happen between the entities that are polarized towards the negative and the positive. Like they say here, there's going to be a sharp increase in the short run of negatively oriented, basically entities in general and, you know, complexes of uh, social complexes, which are groups and people that we know have been uh, self, uh, self service and the uh, delineation, the sharp delineation between four density characteristics and third density self service orientation. Basically, the positive orientation that we're looking for the um, uh, the polarization of the planet itself along with every one of us, there's going to be a sharp um, friction battle, if you will, just, I, I don't want to call it a battle itself. It's going to be more of a struggle between those negatively oriented that want to continue manipulating us. But as we increase in frequency, we get away from their grasp of manipulation control uh, and oppression because we simply don't conform with them. And as we move along, they are going to get even uh, more hostile and even, you know, angrier at that, you know, uh, at that matter. And really it's just, you know, for us to, this is just my opinion here, it's for us to realize that if we get in their territory, then we are feeding them. We are actually contributing to them. But if we simply ignore the system, ignore what's happening, ignore basically everything, if we can discern, because that's a bigger problem right now, is people trying to discern between what's actually our spiritual mission and purpose here, as opposed to what the system has told us that we ought to be. So this is the friction that we see now, and it's, it's obvious that our society is collapsing. Now, I don't wanna to add to the panic again here, but I believe that this society needs to collapse. I mean, this society is built on the Orion's group philosophy. We cannot thrive on that philosophy if we, uh, if we want to achieve a four density social complex. Uh, that's just not gonna happen. So this society needs to collapse. And as it collapses, it tightens its grip on us. And as it tightens its grip on us, you know, it makes us polarize also both them and us. So it's almost like a uh, the grand finale of this this 75,000 year cycle where the negative oriented entities are actually trying to polarize faster as we are trying to polarize faster, but we're going into two different directions. So best to them, best to us. Let's go on, let's ascend with this planet and let's just get out of the mentality of 
the corporate, the institution, the governmental, the uh, the always the position of the tyrant and all this. We need to get out of that. We can contribute to that, and this is probably topic uh, a topic for another video. But I just wanted to put this here and say that. Uh, as we polarize towards the positive and we want to bring about this new planet and our experience in general, we might want to forget about this, this old system because all it's doing is just contributing more to what we know right now. But again, it's very heavy, it's a little sensitive and it's a little mind twisting when it comes to just unplugging ourselves from the system without contributing more to the system by believing that we are unplugging ourselves from it. I know. <laughs> Let's go on with the next part of the answer of Ra, which is the last one. And he said, those who remain in four density upon this plane will be of the so-called positive orientation. Many will come from elsewhere, for it would appear that with all of the best efforts of the Confederation, which includes those from your people's inner planes, inner civilizations, and those from other dimensions, the harvest will still be much less than that which this planetary sphere is capable of comfortably supporting in service. And that's what I was talking about before, that the harvest is going to be small. Uh, we know that. Uh, we intuitively know that uh, most people are going to have to repeat their cycle. I'm even including myself there because I don't want to think that at some point I will reach for density harvestability. I just don't think with that mentality. I believe it doesn't even matter, uh, you know, if we are harvestable or not. We're here to do our job and whatever comes, whatever comes, you know, we have to pay our karma in the way it is. And honestly, I, I preferentially don't like to think that staying in third density is a bad thing. I mean, most of our brothers and sisters are going to repeat. And whether we stay or not, it's just going to be fun. You know, we're still going to assist each other. We're going to help each other. Uh, definitely in another planetary sphere. But it doesn't matter. This is all the same cosmic game. And it's all about us having fun here, uh, doing our purpose and enjoying this reality. Um, I see a lot of spiritual people that get caught into the trap of only doing spiritual work. All you have to do is spiritual work and they follow certain things. I think every one of us have, and this is why religions obviously are so blatant in terms of manipulation and control because they seem to have uh, their own truth, when in reality it seems that all of us should have our own truth. Everything that I'm saying here, everything that Ra said in the 80s, and they continue to uh, talk through the Confederation and the Squo and other entities, I mean, all of them say, it, find your own truth. I mean, get what resonates and ignore what doesn't. And that's how we find our, uh, our own uh, purpose in this planet. So. With that being said, I think it's important to just keep in mind that no matter what happens, if we go to fourth or we stay in third, it's all part of the same. What we do want to focus a lot is to get that grasp on divine will, which is the ultimate goal of anybody trying to align themselves or do spiritual work or uh, allow their higher self to guide their... It's all about divine will. If you can channel your divine will by just disassociating with everything around you that's the ego-minded and the identity of this physical form and this material uh, reality, then you'll just accomplish what you have to do. And that's it. While having a lot of fun, having no fear, no anger, no low emotion frequencies. I mean, that's just it. Anyhow, I got a long uh, answer on this. This was only the first question, but we're now going to get into the Tunguska Crater which is part of the content that was excluded, like I said, in the original books. So hope that makes sense. Hope it adds some value. And I will answer any questions that you might have in the comments or leave me something, you know, that you want to share. I always love hearing about you guys and what you think. So the next question is, uh, is it possible to help an entity to reach four density level in these last days? Ross says, it is impossible to help another being directly. It is only possible to make catalyst available in whatever form. The most important being the radiation of realization of oneness with the creator from the self. Less important being information such as we share with you. All right, it didn't do my homework. Tunguska creator will come after this question. Uh, but Don is asking if there's a way to 
uh, to help other other people uh, go through the process of ascension, basically. And Ross says there is no possible way to help another self. It's only uh, we can provide catalysts for these people to uh, to do this work. That's it. There is no way to produce this this work or do this work for other people, basically. Next, it says, we ourselves do not feel an urgency for this information to be widely disseminated. It is enough that we have made it available to three, four, or five. This is extremely ample reward, for if one of those obtains four density understanding due to this catalyst, then we shall have fulfilled the law of one in the distortion of service. Really important because when we talk about doing spiritual work or even advising our own friends and uh, and family members, which I'm sure you are aware of, they usually don't get it. They don't grasp it. They don't want to hear it. And that's because everybody's in their own path. Believe it or not, everybody has a long story. Even you have a long story before understanding this material or even other material that you have been called to understand and, and find out. So this is actually something that is, you know, pretty useful to keep in mind that there is no way, you know, to help other people and, you know, disseminating this content just like I'm doing, it's not really that uh, important, you know, in terms of helping others uh, reach for density. It's just material that is there that just resonates or doesn't. And that's it. No big effort there. Rock continues and says, we encourage a dispassionate attempt to share information without concern for numbers or quick growth among others. That you attempt to make this information available is, in your turn, your service. The attempt, if it reaches one, reaches all. They have said this in the past, I believe in session one or two, uh, where they said that if they they can, if one is illuminated, are not all illuminated. The thing is that we don't have to have a critical number to create ascension or go to four density or nothing for that effect. All we need to do is have ourselves be enlightened to a degree to have this contribution to the planet and everybody else. By you being informed and getting to do the spiritual work and channel your own divine will, you're contributing to everybody because we're all connected to the same grid and consciousness. I mean, it's a cosmic consciousness, but within the planetary sphere that we inhabit right now is the same network that we're contributing to. So it's almost like whatever you get, it's not you. It's not just your independent self. You are contributing to the whole, believe it or not. And that is increasing the uh, planet's vibration tremendously. So do the work. Don't worry about others. Just keep doing, you know, whatever it is that you are called to be doing here on this incarnation in this time space. Ra says, lastly, we cannot offer shortcuts to enlightenment. Enlightenment is of the moment, is an opening to intelligent infinity. It can only be accomplished by the self for the self. Another self cannot teach, learn enlightenment, but only teach, learn information, inspiration, or a sharing of love, of mystery, of the unknown that makes the other self react, reach out and begin the seeking process that ends in a moment. But who can know when an entity will open the gate to the present? I love that last sentence where they say, open the gate to the present, because there's no future, there's no past, there's only the eternal and very generous present. This is the moment to open to intelligent infinity. It's not in the future, it's not in the past, it's now. Uh, and also, the shortcuts to enlightenment. There is none. Everybody's in their own path, like I said. Everybody is uh, responsible for opening that themselves. All we can do is provide information, sharing of love, inspiration. That's what I try to do in this channel. I love doing it, even if um, you know it reaches one or a hundred, a thousand, a million. It doesn't really matter. As long as I'm sharing this, it's just making me... Uh, fulfill what I feel that I need to do at this moment. Doesn't matter. I do it, it gets done. That's all we need to care about. You do the same. You have your own calling, which I've talked about in other videos. It's more of the the artistic expression of how you see the creator. I mean, Rive and says it. The way you see the creation, that's what you should express. Even if it's something that doesn't, especially if it's something that doesn't conform with society. 
That's why you're here. You're here to express without judgment and without fear of judgment from others. And I know this is getting a lot into the esoteric work of divine will and everything else, but I just wanted to put it out there because they're talking about this enlightenment. Enlightenment is of the self for the self. So that's it. Now we're going to move into the Tunguska Crater. All right. So Don says, in meditation of a few nights ago, I had the impression of a question about a crater in Russia. I believe it was in Tunguska. Can you tell me what caused the crater? Ross says, the destruction of a fission reactor caused this crater. Whose reactor? This was what you may call a drone sent by Confederation, which malfunctioned. It was moved to an area where its destruction would not cause infringement upon the will of mind-body-spirit complexes. It was then detonated. Don asks, what was its purpose in coming here? And Ra answers, it was a drone designed to listen to the various signals of your peoples. You were, at that time, beginning work in a more technical sphere. We were interested in determining the extent and the rapidity of your advances. This drone was powered by a simple fission motor or engine, as you would call it. It was not that type, which you now know, but was very small. However, it has the same destructive effect upon third density molecular structures. Thus, as it malfunctioned, we felt it was best to pick a place for its destruction rather than attempt to retrieve it, for the possibility probability modes of this maneuver looked very, very minute. And just to know a little bit about the Tunguska Crater, uh, I did some research before the video. I'm not too familiar with everything that they have said, especially uh, outside of mainstream science. But what they say in mainstream science is that it was a meteor that crashed. Um, and that was said, obviously, they think they said it was 100 meter uh, wide and so on. But there are some discrepancies. Russian. Uh, scientists I know have found uh, at least some reason to believe that it's not a meteor. They think it's something else, uh, but definitely not the drone that Ra is talking about here, which kind of makes sense. Um, there is um, there is a reason why they would want to uh, know about the advancement, especially in nineteen in the early nineteen hundreds. I think it was nineteen oh eight, nineteen oh five that it crashed. Um, and that was at the time that we were advancing a lot in our technological uh, inventions and they wanted to know what was happening. Clearly they knew that we were uh, monkeys with blades. <laughs> we created the atomic bomb uh, 40 years or less than 40 years after that, 30 something years after that. So they knew something was happening and they wanted to pay attention of you know what was going on so they can make uh, take measures. Obviously, if it wasn't for their intervention, we would probably be uh, not the same uh, Earth that we now know because of the atomic and nuclear explosions that we were having, which again, that's topic for, for another video, but it's interesting that they were checking that out. And that's why I wanted to include this in this video. Um, there is uh, there's a lot of intervention from ETs to maintain the, the, the planet as it is. That obviously includes the uh, destruction or destruction power of the atomic bombs and so on. So um, there's a little history about that, but this goes on. So let's go with the next question that Don has and says, was its danger both blast and radiation? Ross says, there is very little radiation as you know of it. In this particular type of device, there is radiation which is localized, but the localization in such is such that it does not drift with the winds as does the emission of your somewhat primitive weapons. Nice. I believe that an analysis of the trees in that area has shown a low radiation level. Is this the reason for such a low radiation level in the trees? Ra says, this is correct. The amount of radiation is very localized. However, the energy which is released is powerful enough to cause difficulties. Don says, then was the Confederation responsible for Earth receiving nuclear power? Ra says, it is a point which one cannot judge what is caused. The basic equation which preceded this work was an equation brought through by a wanderer dedicated to service to the planet. That this work should have become foundation for instruments of destruction was not intended and was not given. Can you tell me who that wanderer was that brought through the equation? We all know this answer. 
This information seems harmless, as this entity is no longer of your planetary third density. This entity was named Sound Vibration Complex Albert. And we know his last name. Thanks to him, we have the theory of relativity, among other things. He was a wonder, as it seems. And um, just to finish up with the Tunguska Crater, that was their intention. That's what they did. Um, radiation levels and all that stuff. It just explains a little bit more the physical stuff that we do now uh, know here. Remember, Don was a scientist and he was very interested in this kind of phenomena. Um, but, you know, it wasn't consonant with the law of one. So there was always a little bit of hesitation from Ra saying, you know, like, this is not important information. We could be spending our time in something more valuable. But anyhow. He, uh, they answer every every question Don had. Um, and then, of course, we've talked about how the Confederation tried to give information that was helpful through Tesla, through Einstein, to improve our technological advancement to a point where we could benefit from that, not destroy ourselves with it. But again, the Orion group is always reaching with their uh, hairy hands to uh, do some nasty work. So that's what we got. This is the end of part one of session 17. Uh, I had to cut it here. It was longer than I expected, uh, but I had fun making it. I had fun sharing what I think about the Tunguska Crater, but more importantly, the beginning of the video with the four density uh, alterations that we're gonna have, the friction between us and the negative oriented uh, people and social complexes, which are forming right now. And we need to just, I'll just leave that as a message for this, uh, for this video. Remember, the more we get involved with this whole system and everything that's happening, you know, from the pandemic uh, that is current right now with the political movements and all the things that are happening, it's not that we shouldn't. It's just that it's transient information, it's transient stuff, and it's distracting us to do the spiritual work that we all should be doing right now if, A, we want to have a better life, two, we want to accomplish our mission here, and three, we want to simply um, help the planet grow and evolve and without too much uh, of changes. And inherently, we know that we want to be of service to others. That's the way we are of service to others, not through the system. So that's it. That's all I got. Thank you so much for watching. Part two is going to have possibly one of my favorites um, in the personalities that they talk about here is Jesus, the son of the Logos. We'll get to that in part two of session 17. I'll see you then.